All right, guys, day three of our Whipple Supercharger install. It's time to get after it. So we've got the new ground strap all tightened down, new ground strap location, same ground strap. But again, this was originally relocated from down here, uh, tightens down, moves it out of the way. Again, you've got all this room freed up here. So this is one of your new uh, fittings we just put in, basically. Uh, the stock one basically gets in the way of the blower. So you get this new piece, and they angle it off to the side. So you're basically going to trim the hose down, put the new piece in, as you can see there, and then uh, it gets just everything out of the way. Again, everything, like we've shown you earlier, everything Whipple does is kind of clear up, free up room, because you're about to slap a big, fat supercharger on here. This thermostat does go in reverse, basically, so you got to kind of hold it in the housing. And then uh, while you get it in, get your gasket in there and just make sure it's uh, all squared away before you tighten down. So now we're getting ready to install the uh, secondary uh, uh, cooler reservoir here. This is basically going to help hold the extra coolant for the supercharger. Again, it's a liquid-cooled supercharger, so it uses uh, it's an air-to-water setup. So the water, again, runs through the uh, heat exchanger. The heat exchanger cools it down, helps keep the uh, air charge intake temperatures lower. So you're also going to get from Whipple back here uh, to hold this down. They give you a bracket to add in place here. That's what's going to hold this coolant reservoir over here is this uh, secondary bracket. That way it keeps it fixed in there real nice right where it needs to be. You can see here we've got all the idlers installed now as well. So you can really get a good idea of how this uh, belt system starting to look with everything. Again, fixed tensioner on the other side, manual tensioner here. But it uh, looks like she's getting close. The left-hand throttle body connector gets a dummy plug to seal it, keep it from getting dirty. Now, is that a resistor of any kind, you think, or just a dummy plug? Just a dummy plug. Keep dirt from it. I guess, is that an extension harness for the other one? Uh, no, that's this one. And then the passenger side one actually gets an extension harness. And it will get routed over this way because the throttle body's over here. So as I talked about before, basically, you know, we, we figured Whipple would be shutting off one of the throttle bodies in the tune. As Brian just said, you got a dummy plug for one, and then we're going to go off the uh, passenger side throttle body as looks like where they're uh, taking most of their signal from. Why that side versus the other side? Who knows? Take a look down in here inside the uh, Whipple supercharger and check out the rotors and what, what little bit we can see. I mean, it's dark in there, but blower looks uh, pretty cool. Got the lid off here. You can see the road is pretty good from back here. That's what we got. Yeah. Bypass. And here's our lid over here. This thing my is sharp. Big, of course. Big, my big tractor was down here. My regular mower is a he's got a he's got a John Deere. <laughs> but here's our <laughs> See, Brian does actually look at directions sometimes if you zoom in there. We actually do look at directions. But the lid looks pretty cool. Everything looks cool. We're going to um, After we get the blower on you, know, you get fingerprints and stuff. We're going to get it all polished up real nice, make sure everything looks real good. So what we're putting in now is some additional wiring. What is this for? For the coolant pump. For the coolant pump. So it, basically you get an inline fuse that goes in that's going to let everything work. Relay. You know, harness that runs all the way across. And a harness that goes all the way across. Basically, that's going to uh, control the uh, pump that we installed earlier that we showed you down bottom. Now, this wire, of course, has to run out somewhere. Whipple tells you to notch the box there, but we're deciding if we like notching the box better or if we not like notching the uh, lid better. So we're going to take just a little small piece out of there, just like it says. But we did go ahead and trim just a little piece out of the lid, too. Uh, I think with the little piece out of the uh, lid there. It's just going to fit in there a little bit nicer, tuck down in and clip down nicer, not pinch any wires or anything like that. So everything fits down really nice. No wires are crunched. Looks so good. Brian, what Brian said, he's probably going to drill a hole, put a little push pin right there. Just little extra things that we do. That way it'll keep that real clean and keep the push back off everything. Now we're going to run the intercooler pump harness across to where it goes and Figure out where that fits the best. And we've got a little bit more room here since we got this BMRK member on here. Uh, we did uh, what we call the street strip version. Uh, this one does delete the front sway bar. It also gets rid of uh, uh, some of the positions for some of the sensors, like if you got the Magna Ride, 
and some of the radar sensors, it won't have provision. So you need to do the, uh, the street K member versus the street strip one. Now, as we put these injectors in, Brian always uses a little bit of lube on the O-rings. You know, these O-rings are rubber. Uh, they go in relatively easy, but we always use some type of a <clears throat> small amount of lubrication. Just th that way it, it pushes in easier. It's, it seats in there easier. You don't worry about tearing the O-ring or anything like that. You just put, doesn't need a whole lot. Just a little bit on there on the top and on the bottom. Pop it into the rails. And once we get in into the rails, uh, all of them will set the uh, rail, the all the injectors and the rails down at one time. So from the factory fuel pump, the longer ones are going to go on the uh, side of the rails. The shorter ones that you see here, those are going to go into the back. Just a little tip there. Whipple does supply you with some new manifold O-rings. In this case, our car has a thousand miles on it. These are like brand new. So we're actually going to keep these as a backup set just in case we would need anything. Um, I just think that there's absolutely no reason to not reuse these O-rings. Uh, but, of course, they do supply a whole new set just in case. You want to pull your stock manifold off, sell it, do whatever with it. We talked about this before, but as Brian's saying, super important. <clears throat> Superchargers not come with oil. Whipple does supply you with the oil. Very important that you uh, in put, it in, put it in there. It should be in the middle of the sight glass. <clears throat> so you've got a sight glass down here, and Brian is saying... You should be right in the uh, roughly about the center of the sight glass when you're all done. You take four, the four ounces. All four ounces. You'll notice we also have our rails all installed. Again, the small end down here. We're waiting to get the uh, larger side in here, but all your rails are in. Looks really good. Black sets off with that polish. Really nice. Okay, guys, what you can see here, tuning at whipplesuperchargers.com, calibration request. So we did get our calibration file. Basically, what Whipple tells you is you have a couple links here, and you're just going to download these links. So what we normally do now, we'll copy and paste the link into a window. It says that your bin file can't be uh, previewed. We're going to click on download. And it's wanting us to, or continue with download only. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to just download. So you can see that it's downloading your bin file. So now we have our bin file downloaded. We'll go back over to our email here. I'm going to copy this link address. I was going to a different window. We'll paste this in as well. And the same thing. These type of files can't be previewed. Download. It's going to the same thing. Download only. And that's that's downloaded as well. We're going to take these and we're going to move them over to our SD card. Lots of files here, but you'll see the top two files. We're basically just going to copy and paste them, move them down here to the Tomahawk. Then we're going to eject that. So as you can see, the LDR file and the bin file are both on the computer now. Well, on the SD card. So now we're going to pop out the SD card and take it, load the Tomahawk And device. just like we took it out, now the uh, SD card just going to pop that back right into Tomahawk. As you can see now, we've got the uh, fuel rail crossover hooked up across the back there. Everything's ready, and it's about that magical time to pick this bad boy up and set it on the car. I am going to help Brian with that, so I'm going to have to put the uh, camera down. Just it, It's always a good idea to have two people, especially with these O-rings, so you don't tear one or rip one as you're setting it on. So we do recommend two people putting this blower on. Glory be. Here we go. So we've got the Whipple set down on there. We did leave the foam pieces in. It doesn't say to take them out anywhere, the instructions. I feel like that probably helps with some MVH, and uh, especially with those factory knock sensors in there. We're going to throw the bolts in and tighten this bad boy down. These six internal bolts have O-rings that you have to put on, so make sure that the O-rings are in and you lube them. Lube those as well? Yes. Okay. Those go inside the blower? Or? Yes. I put bolts in bolts it down okay so you got six blowers six bolts total it, no there's two on there's four on the four corners on the outside but these go inside okay so you got six on the inside and four on the outside so earlier in the video i showed you uh the rails hooking the crossover up on the back however what brian is saying to get to these two bolt holes just like we unhook this up here to get this bolt hole on the corner the front driver side is really the only easy one to get to he would suggest leaving the crossover off of the back until you have the blower down, installed, and everything like that. These aren't too hard to hook up the cross. It's going to be much easier to do the crossover. So he left off the rear adapter on the driver's side rail 
and uh, left the crossover off. So now he's putting the crossover back on. But that's going to be make it much easier to get to the two bolts at the back corner on the outside. Because, again, you got six bolts inside, four bolts outside holding the blower down. So the big O-rings that you're seeing there, Brian just put in. Big one is for the uh, intercooler brick, and then the outside is for the uh, lid. Basically, you get all those O-rings in there, and they're going to keep all your boost pressure inside where it needs to be. Then we're going to get the uh, bypass O-ring in there. They send one of those as well. These are your intercooler bricks. This is where all the magic of the cooling happens right there. Um, all your coolant, everything that you do, all the heat exchanger, all that comes to work basically with the bricks to keep these cool, to keep the air temperature cool that's uh, keeping the IETs down on your system. Well, not your IETs, but your blower charge temperature. Your IETs are the temperatures coming in, and then these are your, uh, your, your blower temperatures. Instructions are going to tell you to lube this O-ring here as well. Way when you push it down over top of the uh, bypass, it, it goes in there pretty smooth again, just like any of the O-rings, so you don't cut them or tear them or anything like that. Because something as simple as this, it only takes one torn O-ring somewhere in the system to just keep everything from working like it's supposed to. Then you go to set this down, it might feel just a tad bit wobbly for a second. And as you press down, you might hear a little thunk or a little pop or something. That's when, when the front goes over top of the uh, over top of the bypass, you'll feel that go down, and then everything kind of settles down on there. And we're going to put all the uh, bolts in now. Now that we got the lid all tightened down, Brian's got that all tightened down, went all the way around in the proper sequence. You got bolts go all the way around, plus a few in the middle. That's all tightened down. Starting to get all the hoses hooked up, the final wiring, everything like that, and start putting up the uh, finishing touches. That's a beautiful piece right there. That's the new 112 millimeter throttle body. Now, one thing that we like, Whipple, these little clamps, a lot of these, they supply a lot of black clamps, so the clamps kind of get hidden. It just gives it a cleaner cleaner look on the install than if you had your typical like uh, chrome or satin or silver looking uh, clamps. It just gives it a much cleaner look, we think. One of the few tools that I didn't have here that Brian brought from up at the shop was, uh, what do you call this? Spring clamp tool. Spring clamp tool, spring clamp pliers, however you want to call it, but basically clamps onto these clamps and just makes uh, makes installing them on all these hoses much, much easier. And you have a lot of these are probably, just a quick count, I'm seeing just right up top here, at least 10, but you probably got more of those throughout the system that you're gonna be working on all over the place. So a set of those will make your life much easier if you're doing a self-install. What were you saying about this harness now? The map sensor harness, the instructions tell you to plug it into the map sensor and then just roll it up and then It'll be installed on the harness later, the car later, but it never tells you where to hook it up. So where does that go? So I'm assuming it goes back here by the IMRCs because there's a four pin connector to, that uh, matches this and it's long enough. So so you've already got it plugged in at the back? Correct. Okay. Next up is the stock purge valve. That's going to go back on the car. They do have you remove the uh, bracket off of it. And uh, what else? The hose. The hose off as well. And it's going to get a new hose assembly here, and we're going to get that installed on. As you can see, we're getting real close. Got most of all these hoses, everything hooked up, looking real good. Uh, MAF sensor plugged in, MAP sensor, sorry. Uh, just about just about everything. Almost time for that beautiful blower pulley. I was going to do a little follow-up. What we were talking about earlier with that MAP sensor harness plugging around the back. So around uh, step uh, 83, 84, they tell you to plug in the MAF sensor here, the MAP sensor roll it up. They show you a picture around step 87 of where it goes, uh, the IMRC plugs you'll have back there, and they do show it pictured the harness back there. It doesn't actually say in the directions to plug it in there, but that's where it's going to go in. Probably easier to plug the harness in there first, and as you and a friend are setting down the blower, right as you're setting down the blower, then plug it in the front. I think it's probably easier to get to that way, but regardless, that's where it's going to go in. I'm sure Whipple will end up revising the instructions. They always do. That's why we do some of these test fits and stuff to see if we come across anything, but just a little tip for you guys if you get to that point. So Brian just says, hey, at some point you're going to want to do a catch can on this thing. I said, hey, guess what? Our friends at UPR Products send us a catch can for the uh, 2024 Whipple. They already have them. They're already available. We've already got them on the website. Um, but that'll take the place of some of the uh, other things that we have here. But we're going to pop this open and check out this UPR catch can. It's nice. I mean, th these kits aren't even really shipped to any customers yet. 
but they already have products available. They work real hard and do an amazing job at getting things to market, test fitting, and uh, getting us everything we need. So we're going to throw this on. Nice thing is UPR has already uh, sent us a good set of instructions. They have everything mapped out for us. So uh, we've got two cans with this, actually, and one for each side, which is really nice. UPR gives you a longer bolt put back in here, and this is basically going to act like a uh, stud for you for installing this catch can on this side. Putting on the finishing touches on the uh, passenger side catch can looks really good. Uh, this hose is a little long. We're going to cut this down later. Uh, it doesn't need to be cut down today, but we'll cut this down probably probably about yay much, and just uh, that way we can tighten it up up here and just clean that up on the front a little bit. They always give you a little bit more sometimes just in case. Now for the driver's side catch can, if you remember earlier, Whipple, they gave us a new bracket and they gave us a bolt. I think that gives it a cleaner look. We pulled the stud out. However, UPR is going to reuse the stud uh, to hook the catch can up to. So we're going to pull this bolt back out, put the factory stud back in. So hopefully you didn't throw that away if you're doing a UPR catch can. And then we'll use that to put the other side. All right, you see the studs back on. They give you a washer. They give you a little nut, then a washer, then a nut and washer. Then put your little uh, holder on so it doesn't fall off. And then now the uh, catch can. Catch can is basically going to go in here. And then that will go on top. So that's actually going to give it a real nice uh, clean look as well over here. But again, hopefully you didn't throw that factory stud away or you'll have trouble with this UPR catch can. And one of the things you'll notice all these catch cans, you got some little screws on the top. That'll give you some adjustment, those two little screw holes. And basically all the fittings, like right up here, um, those all adjust and stuff. So you may think, oh, this doesn't fit. It doesn't work. We get calls like that all the time. And all you have to do is simply rotate, move some hoses around. You can take them, twist these. And you can pretty much twist them whatever you want to get it to the direction that you need it. To be. All right, guys, here we go. 3.75 Whipple Supercharger pulley going on the front of this bad boy. It's going to start looking like a supercharger any second. Now, these bolts uh, it specifically tells you in the instructions to not use Loctite on the uh, supercharger pulley. Does not need it. Uh, it does give you the torque instructions for it. Addition, they tell you not to completely tighten the pulley down until after you've installed the belt on it. You want to get them on there, but you don't want to get them all the way torqued down until you've installed the belt. So I just I just asked Brian if he needed the diagram. He said maybe. Just again, he's installed so many of these, but you know, was like to give it a try first. Of course, it's uh it's almost midnight, and uh, we're both getting old and tired and fat, so. Uh, it's getting harder to bend over, but you know we're trying to get to the end of this thing tonight. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see. What so we late do. last night we really didn't do the well. That's the end of the day, but we finished up last night. We worked about one in the morning, about four hours in last night. Finished up, so we'll make this the end of uh, day three.